I could see my legs are gone, most of my arm was, was mangled, this, this hand wasn't working either. And I just assumed those were going to be the last moments of my life. I just thought, you know, I'll be dead soon. I was working in Afghanistan. I was there, again, looking at the impact of the war on civilians. You know, we, we see a lot about the impact of the war on, on our soldiers and the US soldiers fighting there but we see very little about what happens to the civilians. And I wanted to tell that story. As part of that story, I was embedded with a group of American soldiers, um, you know, and dealing with, dealing with that. And unfortunately, one day we we're on patrol, we got ambushed. Um, we'd been kind of under fire for a few days in that particular area, it was, it was quite hot. Um, and as we were heading for cover, um, I triggered an IED. And it's the weirdest, loneliest experience you can imagine. I mean, I stepped on the IED, I didn't lose my consciousness. I remember flying through the air landing on my, my back. I could see my legs are gone, most of my arm was, was mangled, this, this hand wasn't working either. And I just assumed those were gonna be the last moments of my life. I just thought, you know, I'll be dead soon. What followed was, was harder than the initial injury. I spent 46 days in intensive care. And then three months after I got injured, um, I was well enough for the first time to be moved into a chair to have a shower. And when they put me in this wheelchair and took me to have a shower, it was the first time I'd seen myself in a mirror and I was disgusted. It was like everything suddenly hit me. You know, I could see my legs missing, scars across my body. Um, at that time I had a colostomy bag. It was just devastating. And when they put me back into bed, it took four people to carry me just to, to move me even into the bed. I was completely and utterly helpless. And I cried myself to sleep and I remember thinking, I wish I'd just died on the helicopter. I, I, I wasn't brave enough or strong enough to deal with this new reality. But the next morning, um, I'm, I'm kind of notoriously stubborn and something had, had triggered back in my mind. And I said to myself, from this moment on, I will never think about the things I can't do, but I will focus on what I can and I will excel at those things. You know, I have more fun now with the people I photograph than I ever have. Because I think there was always an, a sense of, if I was photographing somebody in a horrific situation, you know, I was the guy that could just get on a plane and go home. And I could be there for all the right reasons, but the, the dynamic was always different. Now, you know, people are looking at me, they know I've gone through the same thing as them. So normally what happens is we take photographs, but then we eat together, we have drinks together, we laugh, we dance. And I probably celebrate life more now with the people I photograph than I felt I could have or had the opportunity before I got injured. I had always seen war as this kind of cool, glamorous, amazing thing. War is about trying to kill, trying to maim. And if you're not maimed or killed, you do it to the other person. And there are times when you're under fire and you've just got a camera and you're lying in a ditch and you think, what am I doing here? And um, yeah, trying to load a roll of, of, of film for the first time when, when somebody's firing a gun above you is, 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 is scary. Yeah, am I in danger at times? Of course. But the people that live there, they're in peril every day. You know, I think that the, the hardest story for me ever was um, covering the fighting in, in Mosul a few years ago. Um, when the, the, the city was, was in the, the grips of a conflict between ISIS and the Iraqi government who were trying to retake the city. And I had never seen devastation like that. You know, this was a, a, a great metropolis, a really modern city, and it was pulverized by both sides. And just families devastated. You know, you'd meet one person and their whole family had died. You'd meet children who'd lost all their limbs. And actually, it was, there was a, a young co kid called Darwood, and Darwood had lost his legs and his arm. He'd been injured like I had. And he was so resilient and, and positive, and every time I, I passed him, he'd all smile and look at me, and I'd chat to his mother. And after a few days, it was actually his mother said to me, you know, why are you not taking photographs? I could take a photograph of somebody suffering. I could take a photograph of this child injured. But whatever photograph I took that day, tomorrow more were going to die, more were going to be injured and she looked at me and she was kind of stern and she pointed at Darwin and she said when a child is injured like this the whole world should see it and it kind of snapped me back into doing my job I always describe the stories as like little scars every single story affects you and, and takes you home you know one story that, that probably is the most important story to me is of a woman called Khulud and uh, Khulud had been at home in Syria during the civil war there and a sniper shot her in the neck. 
She was actually in the garden uh, tending to some vegetables and she fell on one of her children. She got emergency treatment and then they took her to Lebanon to the Bekaa Valley where I met her. Now, if you imagine a woman, a tetraplegic woman, paralyzed from the neck down, lying in a makeshift tent. She had no medical support apart from her husband, Jamal, who, who was her full-time carer. Anyway, I photographed her and her husband. Um, and this was soon after my own injury. Um, and so I was just coming back, uh, returning to work. So it was a really important story for me. I came back and the story was published, kind of appeared around the world. And, and I must admit, I, I kind of moved on from it. And then a couple of years later, I was back in Lebanon and I tracked down some of the families that I'd met before, including Khalud and, and Jamal. And I remember that phone call so clearly to this day. Um, it was Jamal and he said, over here, you're back in, in Lebanon, we'd like to see you. And I said, well, where are you? And he said, we're in the same place you last saw us. And stupidly, I hadn't even thought to look for them there. I just assumed there was no way that this woman could still be living in that same shitty situation. Surely the whole point of what I do is it changes somebody's life. It does something. If you imagine this tiny little room, there's no windows. In the two years since I'd seen her, she had not moved from that bed, just staring at the same bit of ceiling. And yet it's a place full of love and laughter and happiness. And the kids are always laughing and joking. And the husband, Jamal, when we go to the little kitchen on the side, he always whispers to me his greatest fear is that she doesn't love him as much as he loves her. But Khulud is like a, she's like an angel. She just smiled and she's like, look, we knew you'd come back, it's fine. And I thought, well, all I can do is, is, is focus on, on doing my job better this time. So I spent the next week documenting the daily life and I like to take photographs back with me so that I can, I can share the way that I've represented people. And on the last day before I left, I was thinking, should I give this photograph back to Khulud and Jamal that I'd taken two years before? Because nothing had changed. Literally the same photograph was in front of me. But I thought, no, I have to. And I handed this photograph to Khulud. But before I did, I said to her, when I took this photograph, I did not take a photograph of a refugee. I did not take a photograph of a disabled woman. When I took this photograph, I took a photograph of a couple who are so in love with each other. And actually, this is a photograph of love. Because she made me realize I'm not a war photographer. I document love. You will never see a photograph I take of a gun, of violence, or any act like that. What I photograph is those moments of intimacy, a grandmother brushing granddaughter's hair, father on the ground doing maths with his kids, a couple like Khalud and Jamal holding hands. And what I find in the worst places in the world is incredible humanity, and I find love. You know, somebody asked me once, do you think you can change the world with your photographs? And I said, no but maybe I can inspire the person that can.